I'm Ann Charles. I'm Keith Garslant. And I'm Linda Quinlan. It's Tuesday, excuse me, it's Tuesday, February 20th, 2024. Oh, very good. <laughs> and we acknowledge that we're taping in Mount Pelia, Vermont, which is unceded indigenous land. So welcome to the show. Anne, you have stories for us? I do, and I have good stories. Starting on an exciting note, um, there are only some awful stories, but they'll come up later. But let's start out <laughs> with Greece approving marriage equality. <laughs> the approval came despite the opposition from the Greek Orthodox Church and makes Greece the 16th, century, the 16th country in the EU with marriage equality. It's the first Orthodox Christian country to do this. Uh, Parliament voted Thursday to legalize same-sex marriage with 176 members in favor, 76 against, and two abstaining. Pretty big. Um, Greece uh -huh. is proud to become the 16th European Union country to legislate marriage equality, said the Prime Minister. He tweeted this after the vote. This is a milestone for human rights, reflecting today's Greece, a progressive and democratic country passionately committed to European values. The nation has offered civil partnerships to same-sex couples for a decade, but those came with parental rights only for the biological parents of, the couple's, child, of a couple's children. Now, both spouses will be legally recognized as parents, but same-sex couples still won't be able to access surrogacy in Greece, although they can be legally recognized as parents of children born by surrogacy abroad. Uh, the majority of Greeks supported marriage equality, but of course, not surprisingly, there was strong opposition from conservative lawmakers and the Greek Orthodox Church. Um, more than 80% of Greeks belong to the church, but its stance yeah. on marriage equality does not seem to be popular, which we like. Um, <laughs> conservative politicians opposing marriage equality said legalizing same-sex marriage would open the gates of hell and perversion. Uh, Ooh, but there was much, let them out. <laughs> <laughs> too bad, friends. But there was much positive reaction to the approval. We started as an invisible, marginalized community, Andrea Gilbert, a founding member of Athens Pride, said. We continued to vote, paid our taxes, campaigned. The legislation provides a legal basis for, to further build on. It is particularly significant for young Good couples. Good for Greece. I know it. I was going to ask you another trick question. EU? Yes. No, no. I was going to ask you another trick question was, you said it's the 16th country. How many countries are there? <laughs> I would guess 52, but of course, you know. In I the EU. Look it, I'll look it up during somebody else's segment and inform you. But let's stay in Greece for a minute and look at a picture of Stefanos Kastalakis, 35, who is the gay man elected to Greece's leftist party in a historic first. Um, this was a stunning upset. He's a Greek-American businessman. He was elected to lead the art, largest opposition party in Greece, uh, becoming the first out gay leader of a political party in the country's history. Hmm. And now he's ready to become Greece's first gay prime minister. Nice. Let's hope for that. He received 56% of the vote. There were over 130,000 votes cast. Um, so he defeated a former labor minister, an early favorite who positioned herself as the more experienced candidate. Uh, he's out and married to Tyler Macbeth, a nurse he met while living in the U.S. Uh, he mentioned Macbeth during his acceptance speech uh, to supporters on Sunday. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for welcoming him and embracing him, he told the crowd. In July, he laid out a potential campaign platform in an opinion piece, adding that he was jumping into Greek national politics as a brief interlude between two chapters in his business career. Uh, he'd advocated for tax relief for ordinary workers, transparency on the finances of MPs and others, reform to civil court processes, and more. Greek society wants solutions and results, he concluded his, in his opinion piece, and so to expats in order to return to the country. I am truly hoping this party 
will stand up to becoming the governing Democrats my homeland desperately needs. Uh, experts call the novice politician's use of social media is key to his victory. Uh, and Farley, the couple's Portuguese water dog, became a familiar four-legged social media presence for Castellacus, and I looked up what a water dog is and learned it's a popular gun dog. So then I had, and a gun dog is like a birder or right. a hunting dog. Well, he huh. knew that, I didn't. And I'd like to have shown a picture of Farley maybe in a future show. <laughs> anyway, he was born in Greece, but came to the U.S. to study at Phillips Academy Prep School and eventually gradu graduate from Wharton Business School. During this period, he spent time working on then Senator Joe Biden's 20 2008 presidential campaign. He later worked as a trader with Goldman Sachs before founding his own shipping company. So, good yes. for him. A lot of exciting stuff happening in Greece. Greek and shipping. Okay, where have I heard that before? <laughs> yeah. Was it in Onassis? <laughs> <laughs> now, there's more kind of exciting news from Poland, although it's mixed. The Polish, let's start with, I have four Polish stories with pictures. Uh, and I think I showed you, I hope I showed you a picture of uh, the Greek opposition leader. I'm sure I did. But now let's look at a picture of a Polish TV host, uh, Wojciech Zelag, who um, apologized for the anti-LGBTQ rhetoric that it was spewed on his show. With Poland, and this is what I'm particularly excited by. Poland is now under a new, more liberal government, and so uh, this TV host is apologizing for years of spreading homophobia. Um, uh, he's uh, on state-run Polish television um, and said, for many years in Poland, shameful words have been directed against numerous individuals simply because they chose to decide for themselves who they are and whom they love. And I'm, you've seen a picture of him, I'm sure. Uh, if you haven't, let's look at it now. He said this on Sunday night, um, people are not an ideology, but people with specific names, faces, relatives, and friends. All these people should hear the words, I am sorry, explicitly from this mm. place. He was hosting two LGBTQ activists, and he said, I'm sorry to them. Now, let's look at the exciting background. Poland has recently had a change in government, with the far-right anti-LGBTQ mm. Law and Justice Party losing its majority in parliament. There is now a governing coalition of liberal and centrist parties and Donald Tusk, a moderate, has succeeded uh, Mateusz Morawiecki, Morawiecki as prime minister. Uh, conservative Andrzej Duda remains president, but the president has less power than the prime minister. <laughs> the uh, TV host's words were a repudiation of something Duda once said, that L the LGBTQ plus movement was not a people but an ideology. Under the law and justice government, many Polish mm -hmm. leaders um, claimed that LGBTQ people were a threat to the so-called traditional family, and we remember the LGBTQ free zones yeah. that were established. Is this, um, this host's on-air apology took me by surprise, one of his LGBTQ guests said. I didn't realize how much I needed to hear it. He added, noting that it feels like Poland is having a new beginning. He pointed out that there's still much work to do in Poland. The nation still does not recognize same-sex unions, but the European Court of Human Rights has ruled that it must. LGBTQ plus advocates are also lobbying for a new law against hate speech. On to Hungary. Yeah, Hungary. <laughs> but <laughs> let's uh, take a step backward. Okay. And, and talk about Lech Walesa, who has shocked the nation with anti-gay sentiments. I'm uh, not surprised by that. Well, he's Poland's first Democratic era yeah. president, a legendary labor leader who's been lauded yeah. as a human rights activist, has made clear his support for human rights, but that it, it also clarified that it does not extend to gay people. Uh, in an interview, he uh, went on a homophobic rant saying gay people should not play a prominent role in politics. 
He said that he believes gays have no right to sit on the front benches in Parliament, and if represented at all, uh. should sit in the back and even behind a wall. Uh, they have to know that they are a minority and must adjust to smaller things, he told a broadcaster. Russia is waiting for him. <laughs> and not rise to the greatest heights, the greatest hours, the greatest provocation, spoiling things for the others and taking what they want from the majority. I don't agree to this, and I will never agree to it. A minority should not impose itself on the, on the majority. The anti-hate speech group today filed a complaint with prosecutors in his hometown of Gdansk, more about Gdansk, um, saying that Alessa promoted a propaganda of hate against the sexual mi minority. Several politicians and journalists decried his words as well. His language was appalling. A deputy speaker of parliament said it was a statement of a troglodyte. Now, in response, Poland's gay and trans MPs take a seat against bigotry. Let's look at a picture now of Anna Grodzka, Poland's first transgender lawmaker, and Robert Bedron, the country's first gay lawmaker. Um, they coordinate a protest against Valesa's stance. Um, and so they're the first openly gay and transgender lawmates lawmakers to serve in Poland, and they sat in the front row of Parliament earlier this week after Walesa said they should sit behind a wall. The members' protest came after um, his remark, Walesa's remarks that I just told you about. Anna Grodzka, Poland's first transgender federal lawmaker, and Robert Biedron, the country's first gay lawmaker, sat together in the front bench after their party's leader relinquished his seat at the front to arrange the protest. Lech Walesa is an important symbol for us and for the whole world, Bidron told the Associated Press. I respect him, and I'd rather he used other words of acceptance and respect for other people. Now let's go to Gdansk, where some citizens are taking action. Let's look at a picture now of Jakob Kwasinski and David Maycek, who are a gay couple handing out rainbow masks on the streets of Gdansk. Valesa's hometown. In a move that was not only charitable but courageous, a gay couple in Poland recently produced and distributed hundreds of free rainbow hued masks, face masks. Um, they documented their philanthropy on YouTube, um, highlighting the love and appreciation they received uh, for the pride themed personal protective equipment. The positive response was heartwarming and frankly, su frankly surprising since Poland does have a hostile historical and recent anti LGBTQ history. One third of the nation's, well, we know about the one third of the nation's municipalities were anti LGBT mm. or LGBT free zones. Same-sex relationships are not recognized them there, and LGBTQ people are frequently used as scapegoats by politicians. <clears throat> Two bills currently under consideration categorize, categorize homosexuality as pedophilia. But um, these two citizens showed no trepidation in their video, smiling and chatting up current pedestrians in Gdansk in Poland's north. Uh, maybe some weren't familiar with the symbolism of the masks, though many people, especially young women, were in on the meaning. Uh, the two citizens made approximately 300 masks with some friends and borrowed a sewing machine <laughs> to distribute so that they could make them and distribute That's them. That's great. Good for Poland. A lot of excitement in Poland. Yeah. Keith. All righty. So trivia, and someone got it. Oh, yeah. We won't say who. <laughs> Outs in the Mountains, February 1993, front page article, and it was a tribute to Vermont's first openly LGBTQ plus elected office holder. Who was it? What was the off what was the office? And why the tribute? There'll be more. So the Green Mountain Film Festival, the 23rd Green Mountain Film Festival, and we're told that this will have a very queer look to it. Yeah. And we I should heard. be ready for updates. 
I'm counting on Anne to feed them to me. All right. March 14th through the 17th, and you can get tickets already online. Passes, correct? Okay. So, Rainbow Umbrella, you same got thing. The Women's Discussion Group, you're tackling not some easy topics. We're getting into it. And there's a lot being expressed. I'm really impressed with they're what really, I'm reading in your notes. They're really powerful meetings, I have to I, say. And then there's the book discussion there group. There is. If you're interested in either, you can go on to Rainbow Umbrella, Umbrella's Facebook page to sign up. So our friends at Fox Market, mm -hmm. Saturday, February 27th, is the queer poetry reading. I know. <laughs> I, but keep your calendars open, because on Saturday, March 16th, at the Old Labor Hall, it may be Foxy's Gala. Oh. This is a fundraiser for the new site that will be opening on Main Street in Barrie, just down from Rainbow Bridge, who's doing phenomenal work. They are tooting this as your queer adult prom night. <laughs> Come dress to whatever nines you'd like for a night of magic, performances, music, sexy get down dancing, <laughs> and community love. Mm -hmm. Tickets are a sliding scale, suggested donation of $50, which gets you a drink, some food, and a lot of fun. So get that on your calendar. A reminder, Social Tinkering in Rutland, they have their monthly social get-together at the Vermont Farmers Food Center on Wednesday, February 28th. Craftsbury Outdoor Center. It's, it's an event we won't be going to because it's, it's their... <laughs> Well, it's their Pride Ski Day. Oh. <laughs> Complimentary ski rentals and trail use. This is Sunday, March 10th from 11 to 4 p.m. You can sign up on the Pride Center of Vermont's website, and it's being sponsored by the Pride Center Outright Vermont, Audubon Vermont, and the Craftsbury Outdoor Center. Now, something that we haven't promoted that actually was created during the pandemic in, in 2022, Dyke Night mm. in Burlington mm. at the Wallflower Collective, the second Monday of the month. Apparently, this has been so well attended, they've had lines outside You're the kidding. door. We'll have to go in. Mm -hmm. And they've had to turn people away. And what they said is that this is open to dykes of all genders and experience. So if this is how you identify second Monday where? of the month, Wallflower Collective in Burlington. Hmm, I don't know where that is. You can, yeah. you can go online and okay. they have a Facebook page that will give you all the details. All right. So get it on your calendar. And with that, are, are you going to tell me happier things? No. All then we may go back to you, Anne. <laughs> All depressing. Well. We may go back. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, yeah. you know, there's better news in other countries than there are in this one right about now. So, um, anyway. I know that feeling. I know. Yeah. The funeral of a renowned transgender activist, Cecilia Gentili, in New York Cathedral elicited a denunciation of the event by a senior church official who called the mass a scandal within one of the uh, most prominent houses of worship in the United States, Catholicism. The Roman Catholic Archdiocese of New York condemned the funeral of Cecilia Gentili, which, <clears throat> which was held on St. Patrick's Day uh, in Manhattan, and drew a large audience. No, no, no. I think it's St. Patrick's Cathedral. Yeah, we have yeah. had St. Patrick's Day is coming up. St. Patrick's Cathedral. Yeah, not yeah. St. Patrick's Day. Oh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Yeah. Right, in Manhattan, and drew a large audience on Thursday. Um, in a written statement, Rev Reverend Enrico Salvo, pastor of St. Patrick's, scandalous behavior at the funeral. The cathedral only knew that the family and friends would be degraded uh, in that, I'm sorry. The cathedral only knew 
that family and friends were requesting a funeral mass uh, for a Catholic and had no idea our welcome and prayer would be degraded in such a scandalous and deceptive way. Salvo said in a statement, the Catholic, the cathedral held a mass of redemption following the funeral. At the direction of Cardinal Timothy Dolan, Archbishop of New York. Mm. So. Good for the Catholic Church, right? Yeah, typical. Yeah. In Columbia, South Carolina, thousands of people in a in one of South Carolina's most conservative counties roared when Donald Trump promised to cut federal funding on day one for schools pushing what he called transgender insanity onto children. And I can't even believe I have to say it, but I have to say it, Trump told the crowd with this month, I will keep men out of women's sports. Oh. <clears throat> A member of the NCAA Committee on Infractions, a voluntary group that prescribes penalties to member schools that break association <coughs> rules, has resigned over NAACP's policies regarding the participation of transgender athletes. William Bach, the former general counsel, of the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency told the Associated Press on Friday that the policies permitting transgender athletes to compete against women are unfair. He submitted a letter of resignation to President Charlie Baker dated February 9th. A lot of people have known how to respond to the smokescreen that says that you can just suppress testosterone and that it's going to make the playing field level. You can't suppress testosterone, Bach said, and the policies that the NCAA and other sports organizations have come up with, which supposedly favor inclusion, actually discriminate. So. You know, it's like the, all the right-wing salvos against reproductive rights. Mind your yeah. own business, you know? I know. It's my body. And who's fact-checking their statements? I know it. I know it. Just, I mean, because you, just because you saw it on social media doesn't mean that it's the truth? Mm -hmm. <gasps> it uh, isn't? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Baltimore County Police announced February 15 they had arrested and charged a 22-year-old man for first-degree murder. First-degree assault, armed robbery, and a fire and a fire um, related charges in addition to other offenses. According to a statement released by police, Jalen Green was arrested in connection with the sexual assault <clears throat> that occurred in the 3000 block of Putty Hill Avenue in Parkville on February 11th. At approximately 3.30 p.m., the hookup was made on a dating app. So. Mm. I know, there's nothing but cherry news in the country, I'm telling you. I tried to find stuff, but it was really hard. Um, so, now we have Marjorie Taylor Greene. She, you know, she comes up every week or every, you know. When Georgia Republican U.S. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene says outrageous things in committee hearings, California Representative Robert Garcia, a Democrat, rebuts and holds her accountable at every turn. His first year in office has been marked by a dedication to calling out what he sees as extremism and lies from the mega Republicans, mainly targeting figures like Green. The noted transphobic firebrand, who often spews anti-LGBTQ plus bigotry and absurd conspiracy theories, when she made a derogatory remark about former Twitter executive Yoel Roth during a hearing in which she said that he disgusts her, Garcia came back with gusto. I just want to start off by just apologizing to our witness, he said, particularly Mr. Roth, for just the homophobic rant and comments that were just made from the gentle lady from Georgia, calling her remarks shameful. He's gay. Yeah. 
good for him. Yep. Stephen Miles, best known for his gay adult film persona, Sergeant Miles, was sentenced to two years in prison, followed by a year of suspended release after he pleaded guilty to assaulting a police officer during the January 6th protests and riots in Washington, D.C. Miles Foddy of Zephyr Hills, Florida, a member of the Proud Boys group, breached protective perimeter around a Capitol building <clears throat> and engaged in a physical confrontation with police protecting the building. He was arrested on Tuesday, April 12th, 2022. Now, here's one in which um, is an indication about how sometimes in our own communities we eat our own. Mm. And, um, you know, and this is an example of that um, horrible story about um, Tuesday, the Georgia Seattle Committee on Education and Youth met to consider Sam Senate Bill 88, a bill that would promise the forced outing of transgender youth to their parents and restrict LGBTQ topics in schools. The bill, which saw a surprise substitute with little time for review, would mandate that schools develop policies around outing transgender students to their parents and would require parents to opt into education on gender-related topics. What happened in the hearing, however, was unusual. <coughs> Only those in favor of the bill were allowed to speak, leaving those against raising their hands. Immediately after the bill's sponsor spoke about the bill, he ceded the floor to Jeff Cleghorn, a gay anti-trans activist who calls transgender people mentally ill sex fetishists oh. <clears throat> and regularly shares content. Uh, content. Um, on um, transgender mentally ill fetishist groups like Gays Against Groomers and Libs on TikTok. Mm. Following an incendiary speech in which he advocated for separating transgender individuals from LGBTQ community, Republicans allowed four people to speak. These included a former president of the Young Republicans, a representative from Gays Against Groomers, and a representative from the Georgia Log Cabin Republican, a group of gay Republican activists. Then they abruptly ended the debate, prevent, <coughs> preventing the dozens of attendees opposed to the bill from speaking. It's awful. You know. mm. Well, let's see. We'll do this one. Um, an inclusive celebration of faith and diversity at a Kansas university has sparked outrage in right-wing circles, including drawing ire from the hate group libs of TikTok. I've never even seen these people. Of course, I'm not on TikTok, but... Fort Hayes State University in Hayes is a center of controversy following its glitter Ash Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the initiative merges traditional Christian observ observance with a message of inclusivity <laughs> towards the LGBT community, allowing participants to choose between transitional ashes or a blend of ashes and glitter to be smeared on one's forehead. I love that. I know. The event designed to open a space of welcome and acceptance has ignited a firestorm of debate, highlighting the ongoing tension between maintaining religious traditions and fostering inclusivity. So that was fun. Delightfully sacrilegious. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love it. And what you got? Oh, sure. I have a couple more Europe stories. This is a bad one. A teenager is in court after a transgender girl 14, it was stabbed 14 times at a roller skating party. It was a birthday party in London. Uh, four have, people have been arrested and one charged. 
with the attempted murder of, 18 year, of an 18-year-old at the Leisure Center. Um, a girl has been charged with stab the stabbing that occurred before the one-year anniversary of the brutal stabbing of Brianna Gay, which I've been talking about at great length. And just an aside, Prime Minister Richie Sumac uh, made a transgender joke, and Brianna Gay's mother was on the, on the had been invited to the session where he made that joke. Um, so the teenage girl has been charged with the stabbing. Um, a 19-year-old girl has been arrested and charged with attempted murder. The unidentified person the girl was at a birthday party um, was subjected to transphobic abuse by a group of teenagers. Uh, police allege that Summer Betts Ramsey stabbed the victim 14 times with a knife. Um, the victim was rushed to the hospital where she was treated for her wounds and was sub subsequently discharged, where she remains um, in seclusion, recovering from the attack and her wounds. Um, Summer Betts Ramsey and other individuals have been arrested in connection with the crime. Um, a detective involved said the investigation into the roller rink stabbing continues, asked the public for help. Uh, sobbing, Betts Ramsey did not issue a formal plea to the charges and was remanded in custody until her former plea hearing on March 12th at the Old Bailey. But on more upbeat note, transgender Irish dancers can compete in categories matching their gender identity, a governing body rules. Um, Irish dancing has ruled that transgender dancers can compete. Um, it's the, called the um, I won't pronounce it in Gaelic, but it's the CLRG, the ruling body, um, said that, you know, they considered a lot of legal opinion, and the chairperson said that there have been considerable internal and external discussion on the subject. Um, as a worldwide organization welcoming dancers from many different backgrounds, CLRG is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment for every dancer in our community. However, we understand it's divisive. Um, there have been calls. Some parents um, want to withdraw dancers. Uh, and this began, this concern, this discussion began um, after a teenage transgender girl from the US qualified for the upcoming Irish Dancing World Championships held in Glasgow. The new inclusivity policy to reflect the position on trans competitors will be voted on at the body's annual meeting. So, but they're recommending that it be included. Now, let's look at a clip for, from a very interesting Finnish-British Greek co-production <laughs> called Drift, featuring an actor I love, Cynthia Revo. It's called Drift, and uh, the brief plot: a young Liberian refugee, Jacqueline, barely escapes her war-torn country to settle on a Greek island, Greece again. Her daily struggle for survival keeps terrible memories at bay, and she becomes close to an American tour guide. So let's look at a picture of Drift, a clip. This site dates back to the fifth century BC. We take a few minutes, look around, and then we'll head up. Oh, careful. Barbarians. Where are the parents? They fled. I'm Callie. Jacqueline. Don't look at my face. You're not Greek. Uh, no, um, American. When it's all over, you might. Where are you from? Liberia.
You can, interesting. You can see it by renting okay. or purchasing on Google Play Movies, Voodoo, and Amazon Video. It looks great. Yeah. Uh, it's a, I read a review, it's a film about healing. Ooh. Let's go to Asia. Um, Hyderabad has had its first Pride uh, March in three years. Let's take a look at a participant, celebrant. Uh, it's called the Self-Respect Pilgrimage. And it was, it's conducted once a year in most major metro cities in India and across the globe. About 600 people participated in the march. Um, the event was conducted in a the city after a three-year gap caused by COVID. Um, and um, their, their demands uh, are transgender, queer, intersex, at the, Demands of the transgender, queer, and intersex uh, transgender community were legalizing same-sex marriages, recognition and education, and employment and provision of housing for members. One more Asian story, good news from Japan. Let's look at a picture now of uh, trans man Takito Usui, who is 50. Uh, Japan, court, uh, Japan court has ruled that um, Takito Usui can change their gender marker without surgery. Um, this uh, ruling was reported. Uh, he had petition, petitioned to change his legal gender in 2016, but was rejected because he had not been medically sterilized, mm. uh, as was then required. His appeal was also rejected in 2019, but then, um, happily, the, in October, Japan's court struck down the 2003 statute requiring trans people to be sterilized before obtaining legal recognition. Human rights groups lauded the ruling. I want to thank my family. I feel, I feel a new life is beginning. He's a farmer living in rural Japan. Um, seeing this shift in Japanese laws left me feeling society has changed and moved by the progress that has been made, he said. Japan still bans same-sex marriage, meaning that Usui will be able to marry his partner of many years. And this is the thing about intrusive laws. Although the Supreme Court ruled against the sterilization law, it left intact other parts of the 2003 law. For example, trans people must still appear to have parts that resemble the genital organs of their gender identity to be granted legal recognition. I mean, what the world does that mean? <laughs> um, last year's Supreme Court ruling asked other courts to revisit whether that statute should also be overturned, but it wasn't. The law also requires the trans person to be unmarried and have no children under 18. So the court found that Usi had satisfied these requirements. It's a milestone, but that's not the first time. Um, less than two weeks before the Supreme Court ruling last year, uh, Jen Suzuki also won his gender change with the ruling that it is wrong for the state to force an unwanted surgery. Good point. We have to move on, Ian. Okay, can I just do my headlines? Yeah. They are grim. Um, Houthi rebels sentenced 13 to death on homosexuality charges in Yemen. Um, a court has confirmed that. I can talk more about it uh, maybe next time. Um, Putin. Let's look at a picture of um, rainbow frog earrings because um, a woman has received a jail sentence of five days for wearing these rainbow frog earrings. And I have, I'd like to show you a picture of the pair of earrings and then a close up of one of the earrings. Um, and also a person, uh, Ari P pleaded guilty to, po to posting a picture of a pride flag to Russian social media. So the court, they admitted guilt. Um, then Russian TikTok stars who kissed um, were forced to apologize. Yeah. Duolingo faces investigation in Russia over LGBTQ content, and they're sticking to their guns. We're an inclusive platform, they're saying. Um, two miserable stories to end with. Um, 
Zimbabwe's vice president says the government will block a scholarship for LGBTQ people. And in North America, St. Vincent Court rejects the challenge to colonial era, era anti-gay laws. So I'm ending on a sad note, but let's cheer for Greece. Yes, Keith. Well, we're going to go to a positive place, which is Barry, Vermont, <laughs> where someone who is, should be very familiar to people who watch this show, Sam Stockwell, who is currently one of the city council members, has announced that she is running for mayor. Yay. The current mayor has decided not to seek re-election. And actually, in his announcement of not running, he gave an endorsement of Sam saying that I couldn't be happier to see Sam Stockwell announce her run for mayor. She is hardworking, kind, ethical, and a true public servant for regular people. Here, here. I can't think of a more qualified and prepared person for this challenging moment and role. Barry is not doing their mayoral election on town meeting day. They're going to be doing it on May 14th. My Anne's birthday. birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. To, you've got time to go out and help with this campaign. We're going to do phone banking. I'm not going to ask where they're hiding the bank, but there we are. <laughs> so th an interesting story that's come up within the past week, the ACLU has issued a statement against the current administration, and specifically the Commissioner of Health, Mark Levine. Mm, we, yes, that's so interesting. Vermont is getting $5 million as part of an opioid settlement fund. And there was an advisory committee that was put together by legislative statute to come up with recommendations. Well, when Commissioner Levine submitted the statement on behalf of the advisory committee, he is a non-voting chair, he kind of left one recommendation off. And it was that $2.6 million of the money be used to create two overdose prevention centers. <sighs> this is the bill that's currently going through, has gone through the Vermont House, is being debated in the Senate. This is Taylor Small's bill. And what Levine said is, oh, well, it was very clear the legislature was looking at creating a fee schedule to fund this, so he left it off. How high-handed. Well, what's also kind of interesting is the current incumbent governor has already said that if this bill were to pass creating these centers, he plans to veto it. Why? He doesn't agree with it. He Why? thinks that he thinks it's the wrong strategy. We should not be encouraging by creating safe spaces. Oh God! We should do oh, greater it's penalty. It's been proven yeah. that you know it works. It saves lives. You think? <sighs> so here is Levine saying, "Oh, this is not necessary because you're putting money into fees to fund this." While the governor is saying, "I'm going to veto it." So. So the ACLU said that what Levine had done by changing the recommendations was in direct violation of Vermont's open meeting law, that there wasn't a chance to see the debate, contribute to the debate, and have some kind of input in the eventual outcome. So the, the, other, the other story that I find kind of interesting and this was um, HRC, the Human Rights Campaign and Equality Federation's State Equality Index. And they have 20 states listed in the highest category working towards innovative equity. And Vermont is indeed one of those states. And on a future show, I will be saying more of what they think we're lacking, what we could do to enhance that even further. But also listed is most of New England, we're in the forefront, but New Hampshire is included, which I think gives an indication of the incredible polarity in our political process right now, because New Hampshire has four bills that they have going through their legislature, two of which 
have already passed the House and are over in the Senate and two in the Senate that are waiting action. And these are things that would restrict gender-affirming care for minors. It would specifically prohibit any type of surgical intervention if you're a minor. And they're also looking at extending it to include some adults that you may need to be over 25 or before you are eligible. They're also looking at imposing a ban on transgender in women's sports at both a high school and collegiate level. <sighs> but he, here's the one that makes my little pea brain go snap, crackle, pop. The Senate Education Committee has already done public testimony on a bill restricting libraries, prohibiting material deemed harmful to minors from being allowed in the library. So oh. who do you think is going to be making those decisions? And sort of the backdrop to this is in the past, some of these measures have been diminished by statements from the New Hampshire Attorney General saying, I think these fly in the face of our non-discrimination statutes and they either do not make it through or get voted down. And in the past, Sununu has been a supporter of transgender rights, but his office and administration has not issued a statement about Maybe where, too early. where he stands on this or, or what action he might take. <coughs> and very briefly, you know, New Hampshire as well, and we've reported on both aspects of this story in the past, Littleton, New Hampshire where there was a great controversy about a mural on the side of a Chinese restaurant. Private space, freedom, truly freedom of expression. But one of the Littleton City Council members, who is also a state legislator, took issue with it, saying it was a supportive LGBTQ+. She was looking at it from a biblical perspective, <laughs> and that LGBTQ people are an abomination. She thought it should be taken down. While that was occurring, the local art center was hosting a performance of La au Fold, and the council was looking at how they could pull funding from the art center because of what they did. The city manager, with all of this going on, said, I can no longer be the manager for this community, mm. and submitted a resignation. He then has been enduring a high degree of harassment. He had a son who came out to him when he, the son was 16 years old, who has subsequently died of cancer. He started getting written materials, phone calls, visits with people saying, your son is where he should be in hell with oh, the devil. That's terrible. So here's New Hampshire working towards innovation. Here is the stuff going on. But oh. in our remaining time. Yes. Well, I'm going to do some brief stories here. This is kind of a, a fun one. In the Logan Circle neighborhood of Washington, D.C., a popular gay bar celebrated unveiling of a large mural on the side of its building that celebrates the diversity of the United States and the United Kingdom communities. The vibrant, great, love is for everyone mural now overlooks the the bustling streets above the little gay bar. The striking piece of art by Lisa Marie Thalhammer, sponsored by the British Embassy, was celebrated with pink champagne at a joyous ceremony on Tuesday afternoon. And you can see a picture. It looks like a British pub painting. <laughs> we like pictures. I know. Now, this is a really sad story because um, in Florida, a man um, admitted to fatally shooting a gay man and his dog in the dog park last week and claims he was defending himself. But the victim's friends say the killer was homophobic, who threatened to kill the victim one day earlier. 
John Walter Lay, 52, was shot and killed while walking his dog in the park um, in Tampa. Hours before he was gunned down, he sent a video to friends detailing a threat to kill him and had received, that he had received that morning from the suspected gunman, Gerald Declan Radford, 65, admitted he shot um, Lay, but claimed he did it in self-defense. End of discussion. Mm. Stand your ground. And he has never been even charged with, it, even wow. looked into him doing this. Mm. And a 19-year-old Florida man was arrested after he was caught on video defacing a rainbow crosswalk in Delray Beach. Dylan Brewer, 19, of Clearwater, turned himself in when there's videos of him, you know, like trying to squeal his tires on there so he could mm -hmm. deface. Tire march. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me just add, there are 27 countries in the European Union. <laughs> Thank you. During this pause. Ah, okay. I was all wrong on that okay. one. Okay. Um, and in the heartland of America, tragedy unfolded as Nix Benedict, a 16-year-old non-binary Native American student, lost their life in an Oklahoma high school. The circumstances surrounding the brutal killing case raised questions about LGBTQ safety in schools, prompting a nationwide discussion. The article explores the events leading to Nex's death and the reactions from various sources. Nex Benedict, they, them, was a 16-year-old non-binary youth in Oklahoma. They endured a reportedly vicious beating in a high school bathroom in Owasa High School. Next, di next died the next day in the hospital. They were a sophomore. This was February 7th and 8th. Um, and um, they were in high school. So this is a picture of Lex. Uh, so very grim. Very sad story yeah. there. Columbia, South Carolina. The first federal trial over hate crime based on gender identity is set to begin Tuesday in South Carolina, where a man faces charges that he killed a black transgender woman and then fled to New York. Oh, so. That's that story. Let's see what we have here. The, the Oklahoma high school student, were there not also allegations that the school administration had failed to call an ambulance or offer yes, assistance? Yes, all of that. They, wow. were, they didn't call an ambulance. They didn't call the parents. They oh didn't do gosh. anything. They, they did nothing to intervene or render any kind of medical assistance when this student was found. I mean, that was the part that really stuck out to me. Yeah, that was part of that that um, that story. And let's see, we have a few minutes left, so I don't know. Anne, do you have anything? Sure, I, I want to give you Oh, one. of course she does. Oh, I think I'm kind of um, out of... Uh, out of stories for Well, today. I want to get more information about this Houthi death sentence. Um, the Houthi movement, officially known as Ansar Allah, uh, is a Shia Islamist political and military organization that emerged in Yemen during the 1990s. Houthi militants control vast swaths of the country, and the group's recent attacks on the Red Sea shipping has prompted retaliation from the U.S. and the U.K. I'm sure you've heard about that on the news. These uh, 13 death sentences were handed down in an area controlled by Houthi rebels. According to reports, quoting an anonymous source, three others were jailed on similar charges and another 35 people were detained in the province, also for alleged homosexuality-related offenses. The court findings are open to appeal. It is not clear when any of the public executions are due to be carried out. But um, the Houthis have sentenced 350 people to death, 11 of whom have been executed since oh. they seized 
Yemen's capital, Sana'a, in 2014. They're ramping up their abuses at home while the, you know, while this Red Sea uh, events keep occurring. Uh, they continued to target LGBTQ people with arbitrary arrest and torture, including rapes and other um, forms of sexual violence. Um, in addition, the Houthis' Mahram Agreement continues to ban women from traveling without a male guardian or written evidence of their consent. Meanwhile, increased restrictions on travel have affected women's ability to work, resulting in many being unable to access health care, with Yemeni female humanitarian workers unable to reach them. Uh. According to Amnesty International, um, in 2022, a secessionist organization in South Yemen and the Houthis arrested at least five people on the basis of either their refusal to reform, to conform to either masculine or feminine presentation, or their LGBTQ plus activism. So that's a chilly note to end on, but I think it's important to give a little background. Absolutely. Now we'll have trivia. So our first openly elected LGBTQ plus official was Ron Squires, mm -hmm. who is elected to the Vermont House representing, representing Wyndham Five, which was Guilford, Vernon, and part of Brattleboro. The tribute was because he had passed due to complications of HIV and AIDS. What I didn't fully appreciate until I was going back and looking at the article again is not only was he the first openly elected official here in Vermont, he was the first Democrat Party state executive committee member who was openly LGBTQ+, and he was one of the first openly LGBTQ+, members of the National Democratic Platform Committee. So he was in the forefront in a lot of ways. And since his passing, his mother has, spot, has championed an AIDS walk in his honor each year. Nice. So, mm. so with that. With that, I think we have to go. Yes. So catch you all in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, resist. resist.